All right, this is how to assemble a 1955 Oldsmobile Hydromatic. Uh, what I've done here already is the disassembly off camera, and I took all the major assemblies out. So you're looking at everything here. This is all the stuff that was taken out. Uh, my system, what I do is I put uh, Ziploc bags and I write everything on it that goes in here, front unit springs, for, except, for example. And what I've also just done is clean the case out. So I washed it really well in parts washer, got everything. And uh, one of the things the manual has you do is check the, uh, the ports and make sure they're open. So this part in the book right here talks about the passages. So you can uh, use an air compressor, get a rubber tip nozzle, and check all these passages, make sure they're free and clear. And uh, that's what I've done so far. All right, next up is replacing the uh, seal on the front drum hub. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, it's got cup shape and uh, needs to face down. So you just uh, slide this over your hub here until it gets into the groove. And I uh, put some ATF on it to help it get on there. And uh, there you go. Alright, next seal is the, uh, the annular piston seal. It faces the other way. And it uh, goes on just like that. Alright, next we have to put these two pieces together. So uh, you can use a small screwdriver and help guide the seal into its hole. Just like that, make sure that your holes line up on the three that are here, and you should be good to go. All right, next we're going to assemble the front hub, and you alternate the uh, the composition plates with the friction plates. And uh, it's always a good practice to make sure you count these plates when you're taking them apart. Uh, my particular front hub here has four of each plate, and uh, you also need to coat them with ATF. Uh, when you put them together and just uh, alternate back and forth like this. Uh, then you have your springs. So we have, um, there's two springs here. We have the uh, internal and external springs. And uh, there's holes here that they fit down into. So put these in. Now that all the composition plates and uh, steel plates are in place, we're ready to put this thing together and compress it and put the snap ring in. So uh, there's three holes uh, that you can see in this and they line up with the pins like that. And then we're ready to compress this and uh, put the snap ring in place. So the book says to use a shot press, but it uh, seems like overkill for this, so I just used this C-clamp and some blocks and was able to compress those springs so I can put the snap ring in place. Uh, so it uh, works out pretty well. So I'm just going to put this in place. Okay, and we loosen it up. And that's uh, ready to go. Okay, now that you got the uh, front hub apart or back together, you can uh, put it on the intermediate shaft. 
and uh, the key here is to make sure you get all the teeth lined up on your composition discs so that they mesh properly with that gear. Uh, it takes a little bit of fidgeting, but you can get it there. There we go, all the way seated through all the composition plates. All right, now you can uh, insert the bronze thrust washer and uh, the steel washer. If you notice, there's a uh, little divot here and that's got to line up with a spot on the shaft. There we go, and then at last, you can uh, install your uh, snap ring. Just like that. All right, next we're going to assemble our rear unit. So we're going to start with the seals. Uh, they're directional, make sure that the cup goes down for uh, this part. It's seated. And then uh, this seal uh, faces up. I'm going to put some ATF on it to help it go on. Together, with the screwdriver. We can uh, work this down. Of course, we want to line up our holes here. Okay, that parts together. All right. Next, we're going to assemble the rear drum, uh, the composition plates, and the friction plates. So, starting with a composition plate. Uh, they go in first and followed by a friction plate and uh, the key thing here I already coated these composition plates with ATF um, so they're all ready to go and of course you line up the uh, the oval with the dowel Also, when you're taking these things apart, make sure you count your plates because they do vary from transmission to transmission. Mine has eight. And last one. Okay. Next is our springs. Uh, the rear has pins in the middle, so what you got here is a, uh, a large spring, smaller spring inside, pin goes inside of there, and then uh, you line that up. on, lining up the pins. All right, we're ready to compress it and put the ring on. Go down a little bit more. There we go. All right, 
right, next we're going to install this thrust washer in the rear clutch hub. And uh, what you do is you put some petroleum jelly on it so it stays in place. install up here and I already lined up all my discs all the grooves so that, that could fit in there and then what you do is you uh, you have a specialty tool and I made this out of a piece of aluminum it really just, just holds this down so that you don't have to worry about it coming apart all right all right, next I'm gonna install the new rings on the oil delivery sleeve. So uh, snap ring pliers works pretty decent for this. go. All right, next we're going to install the oil delivery sleeve. Uh, there's a specialty tool. Uh, it's for uh, installing or compressing the rings on the oil delivery uh, sleeve. However, I believe you could probably get away with uh, like a real small piston ring compressor. It's really the same thing. So uh, I'll put this on here. Make sure it gets all the rings, lock it in place, and then you just uh, tap it gently. There you go. Next, we're going to install a snap ring here which locates the uh, rear unit. And you put that on the second groove right there. All right, now we're gonna assemble the rear unit to the front unit. Uh, again, we need to compress these rings on the oil delivery sleeve. Now we're installing the last snap ring on the intermediate shaft. Alright, next we're going to be installing the uh, front and rear drum assembly here. I put the bands on it. I got wire holding that one together so it stays on. Uh, one thing to make note of is uh, this retaining cap. It has a uh, dowel pin in it, and you need to make sure that that uh, hole right there is lined up or uh, facing upwards so that the cap can align with that pin. And uh, we're ready to slide this thing in.
All right, now we're gonna install the cap. And uh, it can only go one way. Um, the book says the beveled edges face the front unit. So uh, I guess you'll take this as the beveled edge, uh, which kind of makes sense if you look at the case. Uh, you can kind of tell it doesn't really go in properly the wrong way. So uh, slide that. Torquing these cap screws, 40 to 50 pounds. All right, next we're working on the rear housing and the output shaft assembly. And uh, I have some new seals here to put in. Uh, need to install this seal with the uh, lip down. Starting to get in there. All right. Next is the seal for the reverse piston. So put some ATF on it so it goes a little bit easier. And the uh, lip side goes down towards the flat. So slide this in. And uh, Interesting thing when I took this apart, the seal was so old it just kind of was brittle and cracked off. So, all right, that's done. All right, on the internal gear here, I need to put this thrust washer, and I'm going to use the petroleum jelly on here because we have to flip this upside down, and that way this will just stay in place. So, we have a light coat. And I already installed the uh, reverse cone on here. You really, you can just pry this off with your fingers. You could use a snap ring tool also. All right, next we have this flex washer and this retainer. And there's little notches here and uh, goes in here. Snap it in, rotate it, it'll stay in place. All right, next we gotta get this piston in here. And uh, there's a lip right here, which prevents this seal from going down. The manual talks about a specialty tool to wrap around here. Uh, but what I found out works is a real thin uh, feeler gauge. That's got kind of rounded edges, so it won't cut the seal. But if you just kind of first line this up so that you hear the dowels go right there, and then uh, you just kind of run this along the edge while you push a little bit. There we go. There we go, fully seated. All right, next we gotta install the springs in the retainer. Springs go in these holes. And then there's a disc. here. Now there's a specialty tool, but I made my own out of a piece of deck. <laughs> so
you can see that, but it's basically just a block of wood. Put some bolts through it. That will push that retainer down as I tighten this. The challenge is making sure that those bolts don't get in the way of the snap ring installation. my snap ring and uh, we just need to use the pliers to get that in. As you can see I managed to get the snap ring in. A little bit challenging. It would be easier of course if you had the real specialty tool but uh, nonetheless did the job. Just to test your work, the cool thing about this is that you can uh, put air pressure in here and watch. There you go. All right, next I can slide the internal gear uh, down onto the output shaft. I need to do now is get this snap ring in but only after the housing's over it. So that's what I'm gonna do next. got that snap ring in. Uh, it's kind of pointless to uh, try to get it with the camera, but trust me it's in there. So next um, the bearing goes in place. And then holding the bearing is a ring that looks like this. So, needle nose. Next is an O-ring. And then there's this tapered shaft. And if you notice, the O-ring fits into this groove here. So this goes down here. And then last is a snap ring. And I don't have it, so I'm going to have to stop here for now. <laughs> 